Who else wishes to come forth with a word to say about the departed? I'll speak about the departure of fiction from the high school curriculum. Oh, fiction! Let us lament! We can put in the in the coffin, we can put To Kill a Mockingbird, we can put Their Eyes Were Watching God, we can put all the works of fiction that have been abandoned in favor of Reagan's inaugural speech. Oh! oh. oh. Fiction! <laughs> and also, let's lament the fact that students are not given background knowledge to the literature. That this is an idea of good education. Lord have mercy. No background knowledge, no context. And let's let's lament the fact that there's cult culturally relevant curriculum is out, and especially for the students who need it most. Say it ain't so. Those are my laments. Can I get a have mercy? Have mercy. Another way we can see the deceased who's departed or being buried is the sense that we always used to have of a right to public education. Because that's really what's being whittled away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, the testing is part of that. The testing is part of a long process that many of us slowly awakened to over the last decade and have been diligently trying to do as much as we can but it seems never enough in the face of the juggernaut <laughs> that wants to put the juggernaut. Lord have mercy. Have mercy. real education have mercy. in the ground. And I hope out of a funerary procession like this can come some of the seeds of beginning to build together what we need to to stop the further depredations of the juggernaut. Mm. Because it isn't stopping with some tests, it's going on with privatization me. of everything mm -hmm. that uh -huh. we hold as common rights Hallelujah. is going to turn into privileges. Come on now. We uh, cannot let that happen. Mm -hmm. no. We need ideas to guide us. We need organizations. We need ourselves oh, to step forward yeah, yeah, yeah. and stay together and strong in the face of a tragedy like this. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. 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 We know you know what's best for us. So, so we're just gonna let go of the creative thinking, the fun, and all the other good things in school and just go along with you, Miss Almighty Arnie Duncan. Oh, that. And his son, Commissioner King. Oh. You need to say a word for the gifts and talents that all of our children possess. Amen. Lord, for the they, gifts and talents. They go to the ground with education and freedom and justice for all. Yes. Amen. Right. Lament for freedom. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord, have right. mercy. Our children aren't common. They're unique yes. individuals that need to be recognized as such. Yes. For their gifts, for their talents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's hear it for all the children who are here today. Yeah. yeah. The prophet Ezekiel once stood before a field of dry bones. So many dry bones that he could not count them. The dry bones we see of imagination, of fun, of innovation, of play, of joy. So many, of joy. What other dry bones does he see here? Speak them loud. Multilingualism. Multilingualism. Diversity. Love. The value of every human being. Music. And then the prophet looked at them and he said to the spirit of creation, I cannot believe so many had died. But do you know what the spirit of creation said? The spirit of creativity and life. The spirit that gives value intrinsically to all human beings. That spirit said to the prophet, fear not. You speak unto the bones. Because the prophet said, but can these dry bones live again? And again, the spirit of creation said, you speak to the bones. Amen. And so the prophet spoke words of hope. The prophet spoke words of lamentation, but also of hope. What words of hope do we want to speak to these dry bones today? What words of hope can you offer for the departed? Children. Children, hope. Resistance. Resistance. Love. Love. Evolution. Evolution. Persistence. Persistence. Determination. Determination. Community. In the streets. 
Awareness. Awareness. Creative insubordination. Creative insubordination. Yes. Brothers and sisters, it is up to us to speak the words of life to the dry bones. They do not have the power to do it, but you do. It is time to stop waiting for something that is dead to make something alive. It's up to us to take our power back, to speak the words of life to our teachers and support them. Yes. Yes. To speak yes. words yes. of life to our Amen. students in our neighborhoods. Amen. Amen. To stop wishing for schools that we do not have and instead love the schools that we do have in yes. our neighborhoods. Amen. Amen. It is time for us to stop asking the state to do things that only loving human beings can do. Yes. 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 And so, let us say together, in the name of love, Alleluia! Alleluia! Let us say in the name of creativity and commitment, Alleluia! Alleluia! Let us say in the name of care for our teachers and our students and our parents, Alleluia! Alleluia! And let us this day commit to seeing the resurrection of our children's education becoming the answer to our own prayers. And stop waiting Amen. for the system to do what it cannot do. Amen. 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 This is not a day of despair, but a day of hope, because you are here speaking with the voice of creation. Yes. Speaking with the voice of hope. Let today be the day that these dry bones start to live again. And let us become the answer to our own prayers. Amen. 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 Take one second of silence. <laughs> And then I want you to join me for hymn number zero zero. <laughs> hey, 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 ho, 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 ho. All the testings got to go. Hey, 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 ho, 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 ho. All the testings got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. All the testings got to go. Hey, 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 ho, 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 ho. All the testings got to go. Hey, hey. Well, I'm a retired Rochester City School District teacher and also someone who went to the city schools through my home school. I've been retired for about 10 years. The last year that I taught, I spent 19 out of the 20 school days in May proctoring standardized tests. And it was discouraging. Well, I'm a kindergarten teacher at school 12, and I'm seeing how this particular issue is affecting my children daily. I'm seeing the incredible amount of time that's going into not only preparing for it, but implementing it. That's taken away from so many of the other things that I, as a 29-year veteran, used to love doing, but now has put under the burner. And I'm a student at Wilson High School, and a lot of activities that would really benefit the students are not being done so we can get ready for the test and learn how to um, write the correct answer and what the test makers like and write what the test makers like to see so I think that's um, stopping us from really learning and enjoying school and growing. I'm asking that we, the teachers in the classroom, the parents of those children, have a say in making a final determination as to what needs to happen. Period. My wife is a teacher at School 12 in the OLA program, so I'm here supporting her and our daughter, Abby, who will be starting kindergarten in the OLA program. As a church that's in the neighborhood, we really believe that it's our job not so much to convert the neighborhood as to um, care for the neighborhood. Um, and it's our job to support any place where um, human dignity is being threatened. I think the um, idea of testing is fundamentally opposed to um, what I think a number of religious and uh, people of goodwill understand the human being is about. We're not reduced to the sum of what we can accomplish or what we can do. We're intrinsically valuable because of being created or because we're human beings. And so to um, put so much money and so much time into a practice which is fundamentally dehumanizing, which focuses on what kids can do rather than on who they are, and which doesn't actually teach them how to think or to reason, so they can't even become good citizens. Um, if we put so much effort into that rather than into the hard work of relationship building and of commitment to the students and of hard work on their behalf, then I think we're going contradictory to the way that I think in our, in our, in our faith that God has created the universe. We're designed for relationship and for commitment to individual persons and, and, and not just to 
see what they can do or what they can accomplish. Well, as a teacher, I've seen firsthand the destructive effects of high stakes testing on students and families, on teachers, on schools, and really on our community. And so I wanted to help uh, give folks a chance to voice their feelings on this issue and to kind of send a message to the school board and to anyone who's watching that we're not okay with what's been done to our schools and to our families, and we need something better to help our public schools. Now, well, I think because as teachers, we really are in mourning every day when we feel that we have to sacrifice what we know to be good teaching and good learning for the test, uh, when we have to deal with unrealistic standards that are not tested, um, that are developed in a lot of cases by uh, private corporations without the input of classroom teachers, and then are imposed on us, and our hands are tied to do what we know is best for our students and their families. And well, I think uh, on, a really roughly, basic, yeah. on a really basic level, I've had students during the, the state test, whether it's the math test or the ELA test, have accidents in their pants out of anxiety. I've seen students throw up on their tests. I've seen them have to take bathroom breaks because their stomachs were so upset. So the tests are having a physical effect on our students. Well, as far as teachers, I'm sure everyone's heard about APPR, which is the new evaluation system that is actually mandated through the race to the top money that New York State earned, and it's tied into the Common Core. And so our students' test scores are used against us as teachers. But these are the first year that the new standards have been in effect. The curriculum is brand new. We have never had a chance to learn from it and find out what we need to adjust, and yet uh, our students' test scores determine our year-end evaluations. So our jobs are on the line because of the testing agenda that's being pushed. I know that testing has benefited me in many ways. I mean, now I know how to shade in little circles labeled A, B, C, or D. I know how to sit at the computer and answer questions and then hit the continue button. I have learned many, many different skills from testing. I mean, I mean, I've learned how to answer questions in a way that is very appealing to the test makers. However, even though I understand the benefits of testing, I must admit that I have some sense of nostalgia for the kind of learning experienced by some of my older relatives. I mean, they played games to learn the letters of the alphabet, and played recess outside and got pretty excited about school. On the downside, they must have had really awful teachers because they had no teacher evaluations back then. But, you know, sometimes I think of young kids who are about to enter kindergarten who have not been exposed to testing yet. They must be excited to learn, to grow, to enjoy the pursuit of knowledge. Oh, yeah. They must be very disappointed after they discover that all that really seems to matter is whether the state identifies them as a one, a two, a three, or a four. Again, I must add that testing, although maybe less appealing to some, is very beneficial in making students into adults who, well, know how to fill in little bubbles labeled A, B, C, or D and answer, answer questions the way people want them to.